Hey everyone, uh, thanks for joining my session. My name is Nimrod Geva and I manage Quizcom's product group. And today I'm going to talk about some of our apps. Um, I think everyone in this session agree that SharePoint uh, has become the best collaboration solution. And with Office 365 for SharePoint Online, it really opened the door for many more companies, smaller companies or just companies who couldn't afford a, a full three-tier farm and, and IT personnel to maintain that farm. So now with SharePoint Online, every company uh, can, can have a great collaboration solution. But still, when you start working with SharePoint Online, you discover that there are many gaps. And in this session, I'd like to introduce some of our apps. And the key point here is really to provide very focused plugins, very focused solutions that solve specific gaps in SharePoint without any development risk and at a very pocket-friendly uh, cost. Okay, so the first app I'd like to show you is called Cascading Lookup. And this is one of the first apps we released to the App Store, to the Microsoft App Store. And it's actually one of the best sellers. And I think it's because it, it resolves one of the most needed features when you use any form. And this is cascading lookup, meaning dropdowns or lists that filter each other, like the classic example of region dropdown that filters the country, that filters the cities. But in addition to this core functionality, there are some additional enhancements that we provide uh, comparing to the out-of-the-box uh, lookup. First enhancement is that the Quizcom Cascading Lookup is cross-site, while the out-of-the-box SharePoint Online Lookup can only connect to lists that are on the same site. Another enhancement is the ability to type uh, uh, the name of uh, the item that you're looking for in the uh, lookup. Imagine you have a lookup field connected to a list and you have their hundreds or maybe thousands of items so just searching for them by scrolling down this endless lookup will be uh, quite uh, cumbersome and instead what you can do you can simply start typing and with the autocomplete feature it will show you only the items in the lookup that match what you typed another feature uh, solves the the problem of connecting to uh, non-normalized uh, data. In this example, we have a courses list and we want to uh, look up the trainee column. As you can see here in this screenshot, we have several courses that are given by the same trainer. So if I implement a lookup that connects to this list and, look up and looks up the trainee uh, column, we end up having several items here in the drop-down that all look exactly the same, so I cannot tell the difference. What we provide here is the ability also to filter the content of your lookup field by additional columns from the lookup list. So in this example, uh, we see only part of the items because I use this filtering to um, um, filter the, the items that I get from the remote list. Another enhancement enables me to create new items in the remote, in the lookup list, directly from my current list. So I don't have to go to the remote list, create there an item and go back here. I can do it directly because below the lookup field, I have the open a new item configurable link. And once I click it, I get the new item for the lookup list. So I can uh, create this lookup item immediately. The next app I'd like to show you is also a small app, but introduces a major enhancement. It's called Quizcom Dynamic Column Permission. And what it does, it enables you to turn all out of the box list forms and document library forms into dynamic forms, which means you can dynamically show, hide, or disable fields 
in forms and in list views according to the current user to uh, who is the user to which groups he belongs to and also according to his actions in the form so just as a very basic example looking at this IT help desk new item form let's have a look at this uh, at these three fields category hardware type and software type so imagine uh, when I select hardware category probably I would like the software type field not to appear because it's irrelevant and same goes for software category if the user selects software category probably I wouldn't want the hardware type to appear so with that dynamic column permission app you can implement this dynamic behavior in any SharePoint list form let's do it so I have here the IT help desk new item form and here we have the category hardware type and software type and currently there's no dynamic behavior so regardless what I'm choosing in the category I still see both fields I'm going now to the column permission settings page this is the app settings page where I can where I can set up rules for hiding showing or disabling fields so let's start doing it so I'm selecting the hardware type field and now let's add a new rule and let's apply this rule to the new item form edit item form and view item form I can also apply it to list views but I'll leave it for now next I need to define what type of permission I'd like to uh, implement here do I want to show the field hide the field or disable it so let's hide the field and there is the dynamic part the conditions so I want to hide the hardware type field as long as category is not equal to hardware that's my rule I'm clicking apply and you can see the rule under the all rules section it's written in plain English it says hide hardware type in these forms when category is not equal to hardware I'll do exactly the same with software type field so let's add a new rule apply it in these list forms make it hidden and the condition is almost the same the software type needs to be hidden as long as category is not equal to software this time clicking apply that's it we have these two rules let's check how it works so I'm refreshing this page now I don't see either uh, the hardware type or the software file and the software type field let's select hardware category and now I see the hardware type fields and let's select software and instead I see the software type field so it's that easy to make your entire SharePoint list forms completely dynamic hiding showing or disabling fields according to dynamic conditions and according to uh, the current user our next app is called repeating rows column it enables you to turn every SharePoint list form into a multi-row form such as expense report or project tasks or any form that requires multiple rows how do we do it looking at this example we have an expense report the expense report includes multiple expenses every row here is a separate expense all of them belong to the same form how is it uh, implemented this special column is actually kind of a lookup column connecting it to another list which holds the details so every row in the expense details column is actually stored as an item in the expense details list so it's kind of a one-to-many relation between these two lists let's have a look at the live demo so I have here my expense uh, form let's create a new item so this is our repeating rows column you can see some additional features for example let's put some data here in the amount 
as you can see we can configure summary fields and in this example I configured a number a numeric summary field that sums up all the amounts of course these summary fields are also available as columns in the list itself so you can use it in views we can also configure this column to show the add expense or this caption is configurable to allow users to add additional rows it's up to you you can make this a fixed one or dynamic uh, enable users to dynamically add additional rows let's have a quick look and see the settings page of the repeating rows so going to the list ribbon I have here the manage repeating rows ribbon button which takes me to the uh, repeating rows column settings page I can create a new column but let's look at the existing column so these are the things that I can configure with this column so first of all I can configure how many rows uh, users will see when creating a new item how many empty rows also I can uh, decide if I want to enable users to add additional rows or not and also if yes uh, configure the caption of the link uh, then I can select the target list this is the list where the details are actually stored in our example it's the expense details list then I can select which columns appear in the repeating rows which columns from the details list so actually I, I selected most all of them and finally I can configure summary functions and I did it for the amount column I have here a total function which is a summary function there are other standard functions that's it it's that simple okay so our next app is called fill group slash tabs and what it does is very simple it enables you to uh, change your list forms that might have many fields from something like this to something like this so multi-column, multi-tab form, which are much more convenient to work with. Let me show you a quick example that will show you how easy it is to create multi-tab forms in just a few minutes. Okay, so this is my IT help desk form. I want to create two tabs here. The first tab will hold the fields that are updated by the end users and the second tab will uh, show the fields that are updated by the IT help desk staff so going to the field group slash tabs uh, settings page let's create our uh, two tabs so first of all I'm going to change this property which will um, make the field captions appear above the fields and not near the fields it just looks better and let's create a new group every group can be rendered as a tab or as other th other things but I'll stick to tab so let's call this tab issue details and now I have an empty grid let's add some rows to my grid so I have empty cells let's add some data here so let's start with our reported date reported by let's add category I'm adding some additional rows here and that's it let's click apply and let's add another tab call this one resolution details in this tab I want to have two fields per row not one so I, I can do it per tab so you see that now every row has two cells and let's add some uh, the fields for the IT help desk, help desk task so assign two and let's add here uh, sorry let's add here the issue status and here I'll have the resolution details and I think that's it okay 
that's by the way I also have here conditions which means I can say I want this tab to appear only if the current user belongs to some group or uh, if some field equals uh, five or whatever so I can dynamically configure the appearance of every tab here let's click apply and go back to my IT help desk form I'm refreshing it and there we have it this is our first tab and this is our second tab so in just a couple of minutes you can create beautiful forms a lot more convenient than the long ones with uh, many fields okay our next two apps are actually very similar uh, they're called uh, KPI column and conditional formatting column and what they do they they appear uh, they are used mainly in the list views enabling you to highlight items according to dynamic conditions uh, highlighting by changing dynamically changing the color or the background color of specific items or specific cells specific columns according to uh, column values and also uh, ability to add progress bars or any icons uh, according to dynamic conditions to better emphasize or highlight your data as part of a, of a dashboard okay so all the apps that you've seen so far are actually part of uh, quiz conforms app which is our solution for forms and workflow for non-technical users you can buy these apps separately but you can also buy them as part of this forms bundle now the quiz conforms app includes uh, many more features that I didn't cover such as uh, mobile and uh, custom actions which is which are our substitute for workflows but I think the main uh, thing that makes quiz conforms different than other form solution for SharePoint is that it's designed for non-technical users so there is no super sophisticated designer there is no need for form experts the the whole idea is is to uh, empower site owners which are not technical to enable them to um, create their own forms the bottom line is that you end up having a much lower cost of ownership because you don't need uh, technical people form and workflow experts to create your form and quiz conforms is a SharePoint native solution so you still can benefit from all other SharePoint extensibility features unlike the situation where you use non-native uh, form solutions such as InfoPath and similar others our next app is called Pace Plus instead of explaining what it does let me show you the challenge and then how I resolve it so I have this uh, Word document this is a user guide of, of one of our products and let's say we want in our company to switch from uh, PDF and Word documents to uh, wiki to a wiki page to wiki pages that will hold all our user guides so let's try to copy this uh, Word document to SharePoint page I'm copying everything and this is my new wiki page using out of the box SharePoint paste I'm pasting the content okay so this is what I got as you can see there are no images um, I can select in the bubble here to keep the original styles which make it a lot better but not too well but still I, I, I missed all my images all my embedded images so actually I cannot just go and copy my content from Word or PDF to SharePoint it's impossible I'll have to go uh, and find each and every embedded image save it locally then upload it to SharePoint and then embed it in this wiki page which makes it impossible for massive uh, migration of maybe tens or hundreds of documents right so let's look at Pace Plus now I'm going to do the same thing in another site so let's create a new wiki page here I have Pace Plus installed in this um, website so let's call this page um, 
my user guide not the, not the best uh, name I know going back to my document copying it again and pasting it here okay I get this bubble which offers me to copy it using Quizcom Enhanced Paste Plus or using the out-of-the-box SharePoint paste or just the text I'll, I'll choose the Quizcom Paste Plus option okay on the right you might see that images were uploaded and now you can see that all the embedded images are here so I got my original document let's save it with all the embedded images so what happened behind the scenes is that Pace Plus scanned the document found all the embedded images uploaded them behind the scenes to a pre-configured library in this case it's the site assets library and then embedded them in the page everything in just one click copy and paste it's simple as that but you know what I even don't have to go into the document and copy its content let's delete everything here and let's go to my user guides library and let's say I want to copy several user guides maybe two word documents and one PDF so I'm selecting them copying them directly from the Windows Explorer no need to go inside no need to open any of the documents going back here and pasting everything now look to the right side as you can see all images are uploaded behind the scenes 57 images in this case and you can see all the embedded images are in place let's do another experiment this time I want to copy uh, a PowerPoint uh, file so let's select this one I'm copying it again I don't have to go into the file I don't have to open it I just copied it from Windows Explorer pasting it here and as you can see every slide in the presentation is converted to an image and uploaded behind the scenes to our site assets library so this is my presentation so Pace Plus enables you to really uh, make copying and pasting of content from your desktop no matter what file it can be Excel PDF Word documents and so on directly to SharePoint without having to separately up upload embedded uh, images so migration of documents to uh, to wiki pages can be done much quicker and easier okay so we have just uh, about five minutes so let's go on to our next one uh, this one is called Quizcom scan this is a scanning app and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna just walk you through the the UI of this app and show you how it works so once you install the Quizcom app uh, you'll see the scan document uh, ribbon button in every library and in every list item so you can attach an item to a attach a scan document to a list item or add a document to a library clicking the scan document ribbon button will show you this dialog which allows the end user to uh, select between three choices first choice is adding the settings of your current scan and then do your scan second choice is use the default settings that were already configured for this library and just go on directly with the scan and the third one is the quick scan you don't see any settings you don't see any preview of the scan document you just click it and you see the new scan document in the library that's it let's select the first choice edit settings and scan this is the uh, settings uh, dialog that the user sees before he starts the scan so he can select the current uh, output format of the uh, of the scan document by default it's PDF but it can be any other image TIFF uh, all the standard formats you can then also configure a file name based on tokens so it can be a hard-coded name but you can also give it a, 
uh, a more dynamic name. Next thing you can select if you want, let's say you have uh, several pages, not just one, so you can configure, decide between if you want a file per the entire scan or a file per page, so you'll end up with uh, several uh, files. Once you click scan, the scanning is done and you see the preview of uh, the scan document. This is done by using the Quizcom scan client. So it opens up and shows you the result of the scan. Once you click any of the scan documents, you can do some uh, basic image enhancement operations such as uh, cropping the file or uh, changing the, the brightness and so on. By default, all the scanned uh, images are, assuming you save it as a PDF, which is the default, are saved as searchable PDF documents. And by default, English is supported. But you can add more languages by clicking the Get More Languages. And um, it supports quite a wide range of languages that you can add to your OCR um, solution here. Finally, you can save the, uh, once you click save, the scan documents are saved to SharePoint. If you have uh, mandatory uh, properties in this library, you'll be redirected to the edit page where you need to uh, fill in the values for the uploaded uh, documents. And there you have it. It's that simple. Going for a, for a minute to the settings pages, this is where the admin can configure the behavior of the, of the um, uh, scanning solution. First of all, you don't have to do it per library. You can inherit the settings from the site collection level. So you don't need to um, um, configure each and every library settings, uh, scanning settings. You can configure default settings for the name given for a file. And as you saw before, by default, we saw that PDF was the format for the end user. This is because it was configured to be the default output, uh, output format. Some additional settings that I would like to mention. The first one here, yeah, compress large files before upload. This is very useful when you, um, when you have uh, very uh, large files uh, as an output from your scanning. So uh, you can set up uh, uh, the size from which you want uh, the scan the scan app to uh, zip the files before uploading them to SharePoint. Okay, so our last app for today is the Aggregate Web Art, which is one of our latest ones utilizing the uh, the new SharePoint framework. And what it does, it aggregates. Uh, it runs a query that aggregates items of selected types into one consolidated view, which is cu fully customizable. Um, the way to work with it is quite simple. You go to your new experience page or uh, the classic uh, pages, and you just add the list aggregate web part. First thing you need to do is to uh, configure the list view that will be used as the query definition. So there is no complicated UI to configure your query. Instead, all you have to do is select a site and then a list and a view that defines the query that needs to be run. The list view acts as the query definition. Also, it defines the sorting for the returned items. Uh, and then you configure some additional settings like maximum number of items that you want to be returned. Next thing to do after you define the query definition is add data sources and you can add several data sources. In this example, my data source is called aggregated tasks and then you can choose a scope. You can run this on the entire site collection or specific sites or specific sites or su and subsites or even specific lists. Once you define your scope, you can also include some additional settings to uh, filter the returned uh, data. For example, you can also limit the, the lists and the sites that are 
uh, search by some name patterns you can select specific list types that will be uh, searched and you can also limit by content type once you did that you you're, you're good to go so you got your web part with the return data and this web part has a default template the template includes a menu bar with some uh, global actions that can be activated on several selected items here by default we have a single uh, uh, global action which is delete selected items you also have navigation uh, that enables paging and and also configuring the number of items per page and you have some additional global menus all of these are part of the template and, and also sorry you have some per item actions which are also part of the template uh, you have this view item or send by email or edit items all of these are not hard coded they are part of uh, the template and if you want you can uh, change this template completely by clicking the open designer button this will enable you to change the entire look of the web part you can change global menus you can change per item menus you can change everything here and this part enables you even change logic of buttons by using your own script okay so our time is up thanks again for joining this session um, all the apps that I showed you and many others are available on our website quizcon.com as well as on the Microsoft App Store. In case you have any questions or require any assistance evaluating our products, please feel free to contact us at sales at quizcon.com. Thanks again and bye-bye.